Welcome back everyone. In this episode of Mike's Mini Motors, we're going to be doing some aluminum anodizing. So in the past I started doing some aluminum anodizing for my ruckus. Uh, I wanted to take like the GY6 mount and uh, some other miscellaneous pieces and color them myself. And so I got this whole lineup and my buddy bought a ruckus and we're going to be GY6 swapping that one, which you'll see in upcoming episodes. Um, he wanted to do the same thing, so I got the whole setup back out and we did his parts in uh, like a turquoise. And I'll show you those here in a second too, but what we're going to do today, since I got everything out still, is I've got the sprocket adapter for the mini bike, so I can go to split sprockets and change that gear ratio because it's pretty brutal right now. And then I also picked up an ankle biter from the ruck shop for my ruckus. and. I'm not sure if I'm going to anodize this part or not yet, just because because of its shape, I'd have to find a solution for a different bath size and stuff like that to be able to fit it. So I may get this powder coated because the backing plate is stainless steel and I can't anodize that, so it's going to get powder coated. Might just kill two parts once on there. But all the spacers and stuff that come with the ankle biter, I'll be doing those for sure. So. Yeah, and I'm going to explain it along the way, just so if anyone out there wants to try to set up their own little anodizing line. It's fairly simple, it wasn't super expensive. Uh, yeah, so I'll show you the ones I've done already so far. So here is the turquoise parts that we did for Brandon's ruckus. You can kind of see, lighting kind of sucks in here, but that was a turquoise color. And then over here on my ruckus all my mounts and stuff I did the red and then same with my gas cap and my key cover there so here are the pieces that I'll get done today maybe on that one but for sure the sprocket adapter and with this one I'm gonna go black because the split sprocket that's going on there is already anodized red and then on these pieces on the standoffs they'll all be red and then the face will be black if I do it. If and if I powder coat it, it'll still be black. So, because on my ruckus I like just a splash of red, so I'm just doing those as kind of accent pieces, and the main ankle biter will be black. So let's get to step one. All right. So this first step just takes place here in the kitchen sink. It's there's the first degreasing step. Just try to get as much grease and grime what you can off of it. Uh, and also just to let you guys know, I'm going to just probably film the anodizing steps for this guy and not all the other ones, so it's just be a repeat of the same thing, but I'll show you the results of that at the end of the video. So first off, it's just here in the kitchen sink, you turn the hot water on. And if you look, you can see the, the water beads off of the aluminum. That's because there's a present, presence of some kind of oil on here. So what we're going to do is make it so that that doesn't beat up. So they call this the, the water break test for degreasing. So I'll spray some of this uh, purple power degreaser on there and give her a good scrub. Just do a quick one on here just so you guys don't have to watch me do the whole process. But so I'll rinse that off and if you look. I'll do it a little bit better, but it's not really beating up on there. And that's if you see any beating like you do on this side, there's still some. It means there's still oil, so you just got to keep scrubbing until you don't get that anymore at all. All right, here's all the parts that are first step done with the degreaser. And from this step forward, rubber gloves. You do not touch any of these parts with your bare hands until they're completely done. The oils on your fingers can make it so they don't anodize or leave marks and stuff like that, so you just don't touch them without rubber gloves on. All right, so the next step was take, this is my titanium wire, and I got it kind of fit into the threaded holes just to hold it so that I can suspend this in the baths. Um, decided to go with the titanium wire because with aluminum, when you anodize it, it builds up a non-conductive surface, the oxide layer. So if you use the aluminum wire, it's one-time use. So instead of keep using new stuff, I just bought this titanium and you can keep using it over and over and over again. 
So then I'm going to take a wooden dowel. And our first bath of many is the other degreaser. So I'll put that in there and I'll let that sit for about five minutes. Ideally, this and the next one should be heated baths, but I don't have a good solution for heating right now. So I'm just leaving them in for a few extra minutes. But once it's done here in the degreaser, we'll then rinse it off. And the blue bucket is just rinse water. And then come back into this guy here is uh, the aluminum deoxidizer and de smut. And again, that should, should be heated, but I don't have a heat source. So I'll put in there for about five minutes and then you rinse it off again. And then we go over here. This is the actual anodizing bath. And what this is, is just sulfuric acid and water. Uh, it's fairly dilute. Like when I buy the sulfuric acid, I just buy a five gallon thing of uh, battery acid from the parts store. And it's already diluted to I think like 32% or something. And then I dilute it, I think it's one gallon of that to three water. So it's even more diluted, but. And then after that, we'll then rinse it off again in the rinse bucket. And then this last bath here is a acid neutralizer. It's just baking soda and water mixed together. And it'll neutralize all the acids on it. After that, into the rinse again. And then we come over here to the dye. And this one you want to heat up to about, I think it's 140 or less. You go in there, and then rinse it one last time. And this is my dye rinse water. And then after that, it goes into a dye sealer, which I have in the house on the stove, because that one can go in a metal container, so I have it boiling. And then that's the steps we're going to take. All right, so it's been about five minutes. I'm going to pull this out of the degreaser. And then I got my bottle. It's just distilled water. And all your chemistries that you make up are made with distilled water. You can't use tap water because there could be contamination or contaminants in it. So I just give it a quick rinse and then come over to the actual rinse water bucket. Dunk it just a couple times. Shake it off. And then now into the degreaser. There should be the oxidizer and de-smut. And I'll let that sit in there for about five minutes also. Okay, so it's been about another five minutes again. So I'll give this a good little spritz off. And then rinse it. And now this is gonna go into the acid bath for anodizing. Alright, so we got our sprocket adapter here in the acid bath. And one thing that's with the anodizing, it's all dependent on your surface area. So I did a calculation of the surface area, and then you can apply, it's called the 720 rule, um, to know how many amps and stuff you need to run through this. So with my calculations, I ended up getting that I need to run 6 amps for 30 minutes on this guy. So let's set that set up. Change the current to... Six. Sorry for the interruption there. I had some people walking down the alley and they were cussing and being loud, so just pause the video. So let's get this as close, close to six as possible. That doesn't have to be super precise, but I like to sometimes. So there, and then we're going to be running this in constant current, so the current will stay where it's at and the voltage will sit there and fluctuate. But if I don't bump the voltage all the way up, it can cap out. So there, so I got it set to six volts there, and then 34. I think this thing's highest is actually 30 volts, but anyways, and then I hit enter. And then we hook up our piece in the bath. So these, uh, these are lead sheets here, and those are my cathodes, and they actually run to the back here. As you can see it, there's a, a clamp. Right there, that's the negative from the power supply. I'm going to take the positive here and get it attached on here. I'll probably have to set the camera down to do this, but um, get this clamped on here and then we'll turn on the power supply and run it for 30 minutes. 
All right, so I got the clamp on there, the power supply on. Let's see if you can see this, all the bubbles coming up from the, the lead sheets and stuff like that. So yeah, I got it started. We'll give her 30 minutes in there and then take her out. Okay, so we just hit 30 minutes. So we will turn this off. And then power it off. And I can unhook that. So one thing with aluminum anodizing is it's optically clear, so it's anodized, but you can't tell. So that's why the next step will be to put it in the dye, and then it will absorb color because the oxide layer is a porous layer, so it absorbs it. Okay, so got it in the rinse water to get most of the acid off of it, and then just to be double sure. We'll go in here to the sodium bicarbonate, I believe it's called, but it's just baking soda and water. And I will let that sit in there for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes just to really make sure. Sometimes you can see bubbles coming off of it, like in like the holes and stuff, if there is acid present. But it looks pretty good right now, but I always better safe than sorry. Okay, so I pulled it out of the uh, baking soda bath and rinsed it here tried to shorten up the cable here so because the dye bath is a lot shorter and <laughs> the piece fell off so I had to fix it but it's rinsed off and now we're just going from here right into the dye so these dyes usually say anywhere from up to 15 minutes and you can take them out based on as much color as you want but since I want to go black with them and leave it in for the full 15. It's only been a couple minutes, but I figured I'd just take a look and show you guys. You can see it's starting to take some of the color. It's getting darker. And it should just get darker the longer we wait. All right, so we're gonna pull this out of the, the bath now. I've been checking it every couple of minutes and. It's gotten pretty dark, but it's starting to get to get a little darker, but honestly, I really like this color. So I'll try to get as much to dye off with the spray bottle. And then I got my dye bucket, dye rinse bucket right here. So it actually looks actually quite a bit darker than I was originally thinking. But it looks pretty cool. So I'm just gonna let that soak for a minute. Don't really need to, but I gotta go check the sealer, make sure it's boiling. And then we'll put it in there and boil it for 15 minutes, and that seals the dye in. All right, so here we have the sealer. It was boiling a second ago when I took the lid off, but I think I let a lot of the heat out. So turned it up a little bit, um, and it's kind of pinkish because one of the red dyes I did one time didn't really stay in the end dyes and dyed it. But so what we're gonna do now is just put this in here, hook it on the sides, and grab it out later. And I'll put the cap back on. And then I'll just wait 15, 20 minutes. And then after that, it's rinsing it off and it's done. And here is the results of our anodizing. You see the ankle biter part, bi the ankle biter parts are all anodized red now. And the sprocket adapter is black. One thing I wanted to point out is you can kind of see some, ones look like smudges or something. If you have a not optimal surface finish on your parts beforehand, they're going to look the exact same afterwards. It doesn't The anodizing doesn't cover up anything like that. So I wasn't too worried about trying to get this thing super nice because it's going on a mini bike that's going to get dirty and beat up. So I just wanted it black, essentially. So, yeah. Pretty happy with the results. So hopefully I didn't go over any of these steps too quickly. Um, sometimes I can do that when I'm trying to explain stuff. But if you've got any other questions, go ahead and leave me a comment. You know, I can try to help you out. Or if you see a way for me to improve my process, let me know. Um, if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a like. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks for watching.